you know, I mean, Ohio State played without Emeka Obuku, who's a first round draft pick, without Travion Henderson, who, you know, at times has frankly flashed Heisman level ability at tailback. So I, I don't know that I would say that. Um, I, I do think watching Kyle McCord, I see much more Craig Krenzel uh, than I do Dwayne Haskins or CJ Stroud or certainly Justin Fields. Seems more like just a guy plus maybe who if he didn't have Abuka and Harrison and that outstanding tight end would maybe be a jag, just a guy. Um, so I, I think that is what's different. Uh, I think, I, I mean, this is going to be the first time since Drew Henson and Steve Belisari. I mean, when we had Denard, y'all had Braxton Miller. He's not a slouch, you know? So, and we're going back to Drew Henson and Steve Belisari that Michigan had a decided advantage at the quarterback position over Ohio State. Well, you know, you had like the Chad Henney a couple of years, and you guys had what a was it Todd Bauman? Was that his name? Yes. Todd so Bauman. Chad Henney yeah. was better, you know. But we were also, you know, that was the end of the Carr era, really, and um, um, and Ohio State was ascendant. It, it was at you know peak Jim Tressel. So the rest of the roster, you are the better team. Um, I, I think that's different. So I think that's the difference. I don't think Michigan's in a tier by itself. Um, and I don't know that you can say that at least until Michigan plays one of these teams. I think J.J. McCarthy is in a tier by himself. I, I think that he's dramatically uh, better than Kyle McCord, who Ohio State took over him, as you well know. Um, and it's just further along in his development than the five-star Drew Aller is. I think that is maybe where the tiering is, but um, yeah, I don't think I think Michigan's offensive line is better than Ohio State's. I don't think it's as good as it has been the last couple of years, though. So I, I, I don't. I think the rest of the rosters are pretty even. I, I just think um, I think they're not even at quarterback. All right. Well, this Michigan team doesn't look like it's going to be the one to to fill that role this year. I, and I know you go through these games with a fine tooth comb because at this point you're just searching for something to, to critique, criticize, tear apart, be concerned about, and it's becoming tougher and tougher by the week. Like, I don't even know how to gauge the running game. And when I say the offensive line's not as good as it's been the last couple of years, I just don't think it's the Joe Moore winning off award winning offensive line. It's, it's still really good, you know? Um, but, you know, they didn't run the ball that great against Michigan State. But here's why I don't know how to critique that. They weren't they, – they, they, they did something they don't do a lot. They really weren't patient with the running game. I mean, Jimmy just kind of said right away, okay, cool. You know, you guys want to run gap every time we snap the ball and bring your linebackers downhill and sell out against the run. I guess we'll just, you know, build a Heisman candidacy for J.J. tonight. Um, you know, when, they, when you had a Kate McNamara there, uh, when you had um, a Shea Patterson there and some of those other guys, you're going to be a little bit more patient with a running game. They weren't patient at all. Pretty much from the jump, Michigan State was like, not happening. You're not running the ball. Okay. You know, we'll just put a quarterback out there with a perfect QBR and we'll just beat you that way. And I don't know how to critique the running game because it wasn't that great. I mean, they didn't give it. A, they didn't give it time to get into any kind of a rhythm. If you know what I mean, they they did. They, they you know, Michigan just kind of said right away, okay, you know, gonna play us that way. Then we're just gonna, you know, let JJ shine on primetime television, and they did that, you know. And so, you know me the way my mind works. I'm all, even if it works against me, I'm always curious of trying to come up with what I think people will do or 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 what they should do. The one thing I've wondered about is. What if you played a shell, just a three-man front, and dropped everybody in coverage and made J.J. read the coverage? The problem with doing that, though, is it would slow us down, I'm sure, but then we just go back to Blake Horam getting five or six yards in every carry and possessing the ball for 35 minutes like we did last year. And, like, I don't think that play – now, maybe this year – I you know, you know your coach better than I do. I, Ryan Day doesn't strike me as a guy – that would go with that game plan, even if you thought it would win. This is it's the antithesis of who he is. What do you mean? We're gonna get like three offensive possessions in the first half. No way, you know? And and that's just not who Jim Knowles is either, you know. But that's the one thing we haven't seen a team try. 
is we haven't seen a team just kind of sit back, rush three, and and say, okay, now we're going to show. Now you got to show us that you can be that you can stick with the running game and be as as punitive with it as you were a year ago, or at least anything close to it. What we have seen, I mean, go back and watch the fourth quarter, man. We're playing the third and fourth string quarterback, and Michigan State is just like Tech Mobile every snap. Guys running down the hill at the run. You know, I mean, it, 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 I think I told you in the offseason, I thought that J.J. was going to be the Heisman candidate and not Blake because I thought that's the way teams would play us after the way we bludgeoned them a year ago. But I'm kind of shocked that they're just doing it like no matter what. doesn't matter how what, what, it, you'd think you'd back off maybe a little bit if J.J. shows he's on. Nope. You know, it, it's a, OK, you know, cool. Um, but that's the one thing we haven't seen a team try yet. We saw teams, a couple of teams early in the year, try to play TCU with a three-man front, but more of a 3-3-5 where the linebackers are blitzing the gaps anyway, you know, to try to slow down the run. And and you saw J.J., except for that one game against Bowling Green, just annihilate teams for doing that. You know, I'm talking like a true three-man front. And and you try to force Michigan to see if if it can, cause the, if it can go back to what it was before and if it's willing to win that way. The problem is if you do that, tempo-wise, if your team does that, for example, that actually plays into the tempo we want to play, you know? So, you know, maybe this year you've got a more pedestrian offense. Maybe Ryan Day would be willing to put on the sweater vest and and do it the trestle way. I, I don't know. You would know that better than me, but it, it just seems kind of like completely against his DNA. But, you know, I would have said it was against Jimmy's DNA just to say, F it. Okay, we'll just go to the pass in the first drive then if that's how you're going to play us. But that's what he's doing. So, okay. Well, at some point, it may have even be, been before they played a game, you'd made the statement that uh, they had switched uniforms. You know, Michigan had become Ohio State on offense and vice versa. Now, in terms of Ryan Day and what he wants to do versus what he's being forced to do by the limitations of his quarterback and – the situation of running and, and all the criticism out there about his team not being tough and him mm-hmm. wanting to prove it. Well, we've seen them muscle the football. You know, they were willing to run Mayan Williams straight at the Penn State defense 24 times and only get 62 yards. But yeah, they relied on the defense to carry them because they had that that one of those kind of games where they only had a one score lead, but it felt like they weren't going to lose it at any time because Penn State was so inept uh, in and of themselves. And also because of the Ohio State defense, I think is truly, uh, you know, and I, I don't want to uh, make a call on it based on one effort or I would call the Notre Dame game. And those offenses, Notre Dame, Penn State, very similar in regards to limitations on the outside uh, quarterbacks who are obviously from an experience level, very different quarterbacks, but very stylistically uh, similar quarterbacks. Uh, so the, the one thing I'll ask you about the Bowling Green game, because that keeps popping up with the, uh, you know, the only 14 points at halftime and JJ with three picks. I can't imagine that they did anything schematically in that game because it would been, had been copied by everybody else. That was just JJ having a, having a bad half. That was just a team that really wasn't prepared to play football. And that was the game where they were going to have the, that, uh, um, Sharon Moore was offensive coordinator, offensive line coach and head coach. They, he was the fourth head coach they had in three weeks. They just, they just weren't ready to play period in that game. Yeah. That was just, that was just a clunker. No other way to put, no other way, no other way to put it, just a clunker. And they still won 31 to six. Let's not make it look like, you know, the game was ever in doubt or Bowling Green was, you know, pushing him. This, this wasn't anything like if you go back to 06, when we nearly lost at home to Ball State before we played you guys. Okay. No, this was just all self-inflicted and, you know, this was, this was at night and a lot of guys all tried to hit a home run in every at bat and stopped actually playing football, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. Speaking of clunkers, uh, Michael Penix had one over the weekend. Caleb Williams has had a couple. So talking about Heisman trophy, do you care about the Heisman trophy? Do you want your player to win the Heisman? I don't know how anybody could say they would not. It's the most coveted individual award in team sports. And, you know, you look at it from a recruiting standpoint, we had the highest rated quarterback recruit in our state since Drew Henson. We offered him in the eighth grade, Dante Moore, and he ended up at UCLA. 
where he just got benched, by the way. Um, and, and now we have another uh, quarterback who might even be higher rated than Dante Moore. And he was the number two quarterback in the country. So that's saying that this kid's the number one quarterback in the country. And he's coming up in the 25 class. Yeah, I, I think it'd be nice to have your quarterback when you're trying to recruit that kid win the Heisman Trophy. So, yeah, not to mention, you, uh, unless you're putting up Lamar Jackson numbers, which or Andre Ware numbers, which you're not going to in our offense. So if you're winning the Heisman Trophy, that means that you're in the, you know, your team's in the playoff. You're in the top four and you're winning it kind of, uh, I was going to say Gino Toretta, but he's a better player than that. But you know what I'm trying to say, or, you know, Jason White, you know, that, that, you know, you're, that's a product of the team that you're on. Um, and that only bodes well for you as a fan of that team. So heck yeah, I'd like to see him win it. You bet. Uh, Penn State, Michigan, November 11th, I believe, two yes. weeks before the game. How much was your confidence raised on Saturday? Penn State's going to give us their best shot. And 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 they always do, but in a different way. That This is going to be desperation for them. The entire, um, the entire premise of their program changes immediately if they win that game. And... Uh, so you have to calculate that. But the difference at quarterback is it's pretty substantial. I mean, we're we're talking about it's the most important position on the field. We're talking about a guy who is going to be a first round draft pick either this year or next. And I could see foresee a scenario where he's the number one overall pick, actually, against a guy that maybe in two years might be but we don't know that yet, you know? And I think that's pretty substantial. They couldn't block your defensive front at all. I think man one to five defensive fronts, our two teams are pretty even. I think we have more depth there. We have, we have the best depth of defensive tackle, Mark, I can never remember as a Michigan fan, ever, ever. I mean, there are, there are three guys on our defensive front right now and Chris Jenkins and um, Kenneth Grant and Mason Graham that would have been alpha defensive tackles on most of the Michigan teams for the last 20, 25 years. And we could have had Mozzie Smith come back for another year too, by the way, he left early to go to the NFL first round pick of the Cowboys this year. Um, I mean, we just roll hockey lines off the edge. So I, I don't know how they're going to block us very well, particularly about the threat of the quarterback run. Um, I think that's a problem for them. Now, the, without the threat of the quarterback run and 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 with your backs turned in man, him picking up 30 to 40 yards on scrambles, I mean, I, I would imagine Jesse Minter is, has got a little something-something in terms of exotics and packages lined up for that matchup. And uh, we're going to play man coverage, I would guess, in that game a lot. Steve, you realize that while during 2020 and pre-21, I was consistently trying to lift your spirits, tell you uh, what a sound program Michigan was and all the good that Jim Harbaugh had done there and elsewhere in the future was still bright, that I still had a bit of a smirk on my face. I didn't expect us to arrive at this, this place uh, you know, a year to two years later, or mm -hmm. I would have been a little bit more serious about my my comments they they were still truthful but i didn't expect us to land here this quickly 